about that in a minute. <laughs> you know, this one's like for sure. You know. That's why you start from the beginning. Yeah. Until they know it was a real little one, I wasn't so good. But he turned out to go to South Africa to listen to it. Away from me. That's so cute. I know. He went to Africa for six days. I don't even know what the hand of the Onifera for Fuing, and Shinnish Jura in the Gonifera, and the Narpa Grasco Brona Aaron Panida Vort and Freeha, and the Skorutsa at the Sofa Al Nila Freeha, and the Nila Goni Fasta, and the Skor Three at the Creek No Freed, Three Creased Artiana. Direct we beseech to your Lord our actions by thy holy inspirations, and carry them on by thy gracious assistance, that every word and work of ours may all begin from thee, and by thee be happily ended. Who Christ the Lord. Uh, I'd like to call in Deputy John McGuinness to move the second reading motion at the building now at the second time. Uh, Count Cora, the purpose of this bill is to make local authorities accountable to the Comptroller and Auditor General, and by extension put them under the remit of the Public Accounts Committee. The reason why this is necessary is that every year local authorities receive substantial funding from central government, the spend of which cannot be followed at present by the Comptroller and Auditor General. The latest figures are available in the CNAG's annual report, which was published last September. It reminds us that we are dealing with the expenditure of an enormous amount of public money, and it causes one to wonder why the CNAG has not always been involved. However, the figures clearly demonstrate why the CNAG should be allowed to audit local government. In 2007, the amount of money was 5.5 billion. 2008 was 5.7 billion. 
2009 5.25 billion and 2010 4.45 billion. I am delighted that this bill has been taken today as a private member's bill and not in opposition or government time. I am aware that individual members of all political parties and none support what is being asked in this bill and what the bill is trying to achieve. Indeed, this is exactly the sort of bill that should be put to a free vote in this House. It demonstrates that we in this House are determined to control and hold accountable those who spend and collect public money, an accountability which regularly in our clinics members of the public presume we can enforce, but little do they know. Good governance is the mantra of the times we live in. It is a comment on its absence over many years that there is a troika of technocrats in Ireland today doing the job that successive governments avoided or ignored. You cannot have good governance without accountability and transparency. However, we in the Dáil control and audit the spending and collection of taxpayers' money is critical to good, governments, good, 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 good governance. If we do not do that diligently and fearlessly, if we hand responsibility to others and do not supervise and, if necessary, penalise, if we stand back when we should stand up, we are not doing an, the, an important element of the work we were elected to undertake. The Public Accounts Committee is an arm of the Dáil, and along with all Dáil committees, it should be strong and a powerful arm because it is one of the means whereby the Dáil demonstrates its power in a very public and meaningful way. The Public Accounts Committee gained its reputation, the goodwill of a large section of the public and the respect of the rest during the Dirt Inquiry. During that inquiry, the banks and members of the public were rightly made to provide information and pay for their mistakes in a very short space of time, which was right and proper. Now look at the other side of the coin when public service accountability transparency and efficient use of billions of taxpayers' money is under scrutiny, time frames are ignored, documents and written answers are not produced in a timely fashion, and the committee is frequently treated with barely concealed annoyance and condescension. I hasten to add that this does not apply to all those who come before us, but there is a hard core who believe themselves to be above all of that committee nonsense. However, the important point is we do not live in a two-speed republic. What is good for the general public should be applied without fear to the public service and its accountability. The state is accountable to the Dáil and the members of the Dáil are accountable to the Irish people. The committee takes its duty seriously and in relation to the bill now before you, I seek what I believe are necessary powers to audit, investigate and hold accountable those in local authorities who, can, who together spend billions of public money in a manner that is often far from satisfactory. The members of this House are the ones that can make this happen. This is not about party politics. This is about our belief in ourselves, our willingness to demand good governance, come what may, and our ability to withstand the pressures that will be brought by those who prefer the veil and the vague to the cold light of objective and close scrutiny. We should remember that we spend most of our time here debating ways of taking money and taxing through one tax or another, and far too little time on how we can save money as water drips into the ground, funds are unwisely spent, and expensive consultants' reports fill the dustbins of some departments. I was a member of two local authorities covering a period of 25 years, and during that time saw little or no scrutiny of the way taxpayers' money was spent. An audit report was an exotic creature that appeared now and again during council meetings, which members did not engage with for fear it would bite. Serving on the Public Accounts Committee, from 2002 to 2007, I discovered that familiarity with the creature was not enough. You could look, but you couldn't touch. The creature remained exotic, but it was clearly expensive to maintain, something its keepers were not prepared to talk about. Nevertheless, it was Public Accounts Committee who discovered a €9 million Euro hole in the finances of one local authority, and the seriousness of the committee's inability to investigate came sharply into focus. In September 2005, Pat Rabbit, who was then one of the members of the committee, produced a report which examined the whole issue of local government accountability and transparency, which concluded that it wasn't. The report is very clear about central government funding, and I want to read what it said into the record of the House. I quote, The audit undertaken by the local government audit service does not feed into the Dáil accountability process, as embodied by the Public Accounts Committee. It is therefore difficult for the funding org and visibly Dáil Airden to satisfy itself that the money provided is properly used and achieving value for money." End of quote. That report went on to point out that the practical difficulty of having local authorities not being accountable to the CNAG 
even though funded bodies such as the National Roads Authority have their accounts audited by the CNAG. The report concluded, and I quote, that represent, this represents a significant restriction in the controller's capacity to account for a significant portion of national public expenditure. In all honesty, how can we look the people of this country in the eye and tell them that billions of their money is being spent in a manner that sometimes raises grave doubts and the state's most senior financial officer cannot properly investigate what's going on? The report went on to outline shortcomings of local accountability when it stated, and I quote, the restriction of the controller's capacity to account for the expenditure of these sums might not be of concern if local audit was an adequate substitute. However, it is not. This is not a criticism of the professional adequacy and competence of the local government audit service. What is of concern is the lack of any coherent, systematic or sustained response by local authority members to the statements and reports of that service. Put simply and starkly, I am not convinced that local authority audit committees function in any meaningful sense as a means of ensuring accountability for the stewardship of public funds. As I said, I'm quoting from the report, and these are the words of a respected parliamentarian and a minister in the current government, who was clearly unhappy with what he had seen and wanted it changed. I do not use his name for any political reasons. I use it because it has weight, and I respect what he stands for. I share his view, and would contend that anyone who knows the system, as well as Pat Rabbit or I, would not disagree with the conclusions of that report. Pat Rabbit's words are even more relevant today than when they were written six years ago. I could say there is a greater need for change now, but the fact is that need for change was there when we had the money to afford it. And perhaps if we were as rigorous about our supervision across the board then, we might, might not be where we are now. We have been given a harsh lesson about what happens when those who accept leadership roles hand unsupervised responsibility to others. I know most of us are not accountants, auditors or solicitors, but no one in this, house, in this chamber is without experience or common sense, and we undervalue those virtues. Too often we sell ourselves short to those who sell themselves big. We should remember that we offered ourselves as leaders and lawmakers, and we made promises. We climbed a steep road to get where we are today. We are the elected representatives of the Irish people who have given us power that we should not hesitate to use on their behalf. A healthy, mutual, respectful tension should exist between politicians and public servants. But the responsibility to lead is ours. If we do not do that job, a vacuum results, which creates governance and control stresses that are unhealthy in a democracy and damaging to politics. Let me illustrate where the lack of tension and rigour has led us and give you some exa examples of the cost of lack of supervision, accountability and transparency in local government, which I believe will clearly demonstrate that the people of Ireland, who are laden with petty rules and endless red tape, are not getting value for money, or the accountability or transparency that creates it. Yesterday at the PSC, we dealt with the cost of maintenance and improvement of local and regional roads, for which 411 million was given by the NRA in 2010. The concern raised by the CNAG in his report related to the cost of resurfacing work, which for regional roads ranged from €3.78 per square metre in Clare to €10.87 per square metre in Sligo. For local road resurfacing, the spread ranged from 272 per square metre in Cavan to 11.53 per square metre in Sligo. The cat's eyes must have diamonds in them. That is just one instance where the Public Accounts Committee needs to be able to investigate to ensure that public monies are not being wasted. There may be a valid reason for the divergence, but it is hard to imagine that the taxpayer is getting value from money from Sligo County Council. It is in the Council's and the taxpayers' interest that this be investigated by the CNAG, and the fact that it is not only weakens public confidence in the doll. The NRA can conduct certain audit functions in relation to the spend. They can actually uh, call call on different projects, but yet the CNAG can't do it. Now let's look at the water services. In 2010, the Exchequer allocated 535 million to local authorities for water and sanitary services. In fact, I am quoting CNAG figures here. In the period 2000-2010, 5.2 billion of exector, exchequer resources have been invested in the upgrading and provision of new water services infrastructure. One of the ways we judge the effectiveness of that investment is in water quality. And to be fair, this has shown constant improvement. The second way to judge the effectiveness of this investment is to look at how much treated water goes unaccounted for every year. 
The average loss across all councils is 41%, twice the OECD average. In some council areas, the percentage loss is as high as 58%. So the result is that we invest heavily as a state in treating water, and yet 40% of that investment is negative, as the water leaks from the system or whatever, but it does not get to the end user. Of course, we've now come to the point where the end user will have to pay not only for the water he or she uses, but also, in effect, for the water that, are wa that is wasted. All the PEC can do is raise the matter with the Department of the Environment, Heritage and Local Government. We have to work at mac macro level, which is useless. The responsible people in local government, county managers and directors of services, do not come before the committee. We are dealing with them through a filter of their departmental colleagues and in-house internal auditors, all of whom are too connected to make good governance possible. It is an irrational system that does not inspire confidence. And with the best will in the world, in-house auditing involves conflicts of interest and, in my opinion, does not have the impact of a completely independent audit. All of this has not been lost on concerned citizens and taxpayers. They are beginning to look past the politicians, which isn't good. A number of issues have been raised by the general public with PSC in the past year, and we've had to tell these, those concerned that there is nothing we can do about what they believe is a waste of public funds. You will understand that delivering this message does not sit easily with me. In effect, I am telling the public that despite their perception of the PSC and indeed of the Dáil and politicians, we are not in control of so much that goes on. How long do you think we can support that charade before we lose the little credibility and trust that we still have? We don't assert, we, we, we have to uh, assert our authority. Let me give you some examples of the matters brought to the attention of PSC, which we cannot deal with for which no one is held accountable for, except politicians, because the public believe in the pretense that we are in control when we are not. All we are is scapegoats in some instances for those we have delegated control to, where we are not able to supervise or hold accountable in any meaningful way. The pool bag incinerator, where to date 80 million euros was spent uh, as a project whose viability is questionable. In this case, PSC asked the accounting officer to ask the local government audit team to investigate the spend to date. This was agreed, but PSC has no idea when the report will be completed or when we are likely to examine it. In my opinion, it will be a long time before we see white smoke on the pool bag report, unless PSC is allowed, allowed to light a fire under that process. The purchase of lands by Wicklow County Council in Greystones and the fact that they were forced, based on a 2007 contract, to pay €3 million Euro in 2011 for lands that are worth a fraction of that amount. I'm told that these lands will never be developed or they are in a floodplain. What happened there and why did it happen? The Dáil needs to know and the public have a right to know. The recent High Court judgment against Meath County Council, which led to an award of four million being made against the Council for planning irregularities. Again, PSC should be able to investigate and report on that matter. The CNAG can examine a body like the NRA and look at the effectiveness of, of expenditure, which puts pressure on the body to do its business effectively and well. Local authorities, on the other hand, only seek to maximise the grants they get from central government. The only way we can ensure that those grants are used in a manner that gives value for money is to have local authorities accountable to the CNAG and therefore to PAC. I think it's evident what the problem is and how, we can, how it can be remedied. What is not evident is why local government fears and quietly attempts to block giving powers to the CNAG. If for no other reason, and there are plenty, this is why we should ensure that, he is, that these powers are given. Since my appointment last year as chairman of PSC, I've been advocating change. To me, it makes no sense that any layer of government cannot be held to account by the CNAG for the expenditure of huge amounts of taxpayers' money. I note that in the Public Service Reform Plan published by Minister Howden last year, the whole local government audit unit, which is part of the Department of Environment, Community and Local Government, was to be subject of critical analysis this year, with a view to seeing whether or not it could be amalgamated with the CNAG. I understand that the review is being conducted by a group appointed by the Minister for the Environment, uh, Heritage and Local Government and will conclude this work at the end of June. I do not want to prejudge the finding of this group, but I have a concern that they have not sought the views of the Public Accounts Committee, for instance. There are 140 professional staff in the office of the CNAG and there are 40 similar qualified staff in the Local Government Audit Service. It makes absolutely sense, absolute sense that these bodies are amalgamated. I would be surprised and disappointed if the report found otherwise. On average, 50% of local government expenditure comes from the state, and the remainder is raised locally through commercial rates and various charges. 
For some of the largest councils, and especially councils representing major urban areas, the exchequer contribution will be below 50%. How councils spend their money is a matter very much for each council. PSC cannot be involved because local government is constitutionally independent and a state, in a state-to-day function. The bill will not jeopardise that independence. Rather, it is trying to deal with the reality, as was outlined in the 1995 report produced by Minister Rabbit, which is that the Dáil must have mechanisms to account for the money that is allocated by the decision of the Dáil. This, that is the reality. Change needs to happen, and it needs to happen quickly. The government has a duty to investigate and hold accountable all those who spend public money. There is no doubt in my mind that this is best done by empowering the CNAG. It will be a measure of the seriousness with which Minister Howland and his department face the challenge of public sector reform if they succeed and achieve what is set out in this bill. Both are in vested interests will argue for the status quo. The Minister will have to deal with the inertia that bold steps and take bold steps if he wants to ensure that the taxpayer is the ultimate winner. Will common sense prevail or will we see ministers and departments hiding behind conventions and supporting systems that si simply do not work? Senior management will ensure that systems, procedures and government structures are in place and respected if they know that they will be held to account in public before the PSC, which does not happen now. Furthermore, county managers should also rank as accounting officers. That alone would be a big step toward good governments, transparency and accountability. We have the template for how it works. We need to go further and we need to look at Northern Ireland where the audit office has responsibility for departments, state bodies and local authorities. I will finish by going back to the basic law of this state, which is our constitution, and in particular to Article 33, which provides for the CNAG, and I quote, to audit all of, to, to audit all, of all accounts of monies administered by or under the authority of the Oireachtas. To my mind's mind, Money that are voted in this House for either roads or water services or for social housing are allocated to local authority fall into the category of money administered under the authority of the Oireachtas. The bill is necessary, Count Corley. It gives us the right to follow money to the point where it is spent. It gives the Dáil through PSC the right to ask questions. It puts power where power should rest. It demonstrates to the public and to public servants that the Dáil is in control and takes that responsibility seriously. I commend this bill to the House. Thank you. Uh, could I just advise deputies that the first four slots are for the main spokespersons from Fianna Fáil, Sinn Féin, the Technic Group and the Minister. All right? So I now call on Sinn Féin. Jonathan O'Brien. Thanks, uh, Kim Crowley. Um, first of all, can I congratulate um, Deputy McGuinness for um, bringing forward this bill. I think it's a, a very common sense bill, Minister, and um, we will certainly be supporting it. And I could see no reason, having read through it and having listened to the opening speech, why anyone in this House would disagree with the sentiment behind the bill. And I would sincerely hope, although I would hope, but I'm not, um, I don't think the government will support it for, for whatever reason. And I'm only presuming, I, I don't know yet whether the government are going to support it or not. But I, I sincerely hope that, that the government does um, support it. Um, I think it's a very common sense approach. I mean, if you look at the current scenario that uh, exists within local authorities, and I served 11 years on um, Cork City Council, as I'm sure many deputies in here have served on various local authorities throughout the state. And the way it works at the moment, um, the local government auditor will do a report, which is then produced. It's given to each member of the local authority, and... It's almost like saying to the elected members of the local authority, it's now up to you to scrutinise it. And as Deputy McGuinness has said, many of us are not accountants, we're not experts in, 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 in that area. And it makes complete sense that public money is scrutinised by the Oireachtas. And no better committee than the Public Accounts Committee to do so. And I think anything that doesn't allow that or prevents that um, is really um, unfortunate because we have to give um, confidence to the general public, especially in these harsh economic times when every penny counts. And we have a responsibility as um, an Oireachtas to ensure that money, taxpayers' money, hard-earned money is spent appropriately and is accountable. Um, and for that reason, we will, we will be supporting it. I mean, 
if I take my own experience from Cork City Council, um, where up to a number of years ago, we didn't even have a finance committee on Cork City Council. Um, when the um, policy committees came in, there was no policy committee dealing with finance. And the only opportunity we had to question the managers or the various directors of services around how money was being spent was when we were um, formulating the budgets um, in December. And even at that, we had a council of 31 councillors, um, was the makeup of Cork City Councils, 31 elected members. Yet it fell to the um, policy group, which was the chairs of the various SPCs, who did all the background work in formulating the budgets. And then they were almost presented to the rest of the council as a fait accompli. And there was very little scope to question where the money was being spent, were we getting value for money. There was, there, there was little or no opportunity to even transfer money between budgets because m m a lot of the money which was allocated um, in local authority budget, budgets was for um, you know, wages, payroll, and there was no discretionary spending there. And it was very frustrating for a lot of councillors um, with that process. And I think the, the current system um, is just not working. I don't think it allows local authority members the expertise or the ability to truly scrutinise the local government audits. And I think it makes complete sense that the CANG takes over that responsibility because they are publicly accountable. They come in before the PAC, um, they will give their reports, it gives people um, from all various political backgrounds and parties the opportunity to then question it. And I think it's, um, and I say it again, especially in these tough economic times, I mean, you know, accountability is so important. And when this government came into office, you made a big play on, you know, you were going to reform the system um, around local government, that we were going to have a um, much more accountable government. And this bill actually, you know, will enhance that. And I, I sincerely hope that it is um, supported by the government. And if it's not supported by the government, then there needs to be a damn good reason why it's not supported. And we also need to hear proposals from the government on how they're going to make public money, which is spent by local authorities, more accountable. I mean, one of the frustrations when I, when I talk to people around local government funding is, I mean, in Cork, we have the highest paid mayor probably in Europe. He earns in excess of 117,000 euros, more than a, you know, a TD or a senator. And he has very little powers for, 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 for that. Um, on top of that, the amount of money that's been spent on conferences, the amount of money that's been spent on um, councillors' expenses, there's very little scrutiny of that. And I think you know, that really frustrates people. It, re it frustrates people more now at a time when we're cutting budgets in housing maintenance, we're cutting budgets in road resurfacing, um, you know, we're cutting budgets in, in, in our parks and our recreation, our, in our libraries, and yet they see um, senior officials, they see city managers walking away with huge severance packages, bonuses, um, and it's just not acceptable anymore, and, and it's something that needs to change. And I know that it's something that we've raised um, around, you know, cutting severance packages to outgoing um, city and county managers. And when we did raise it, this government said that, I think it was Minister Howland, in fact, said that it was one of his goals was to try and get rid of that culture. Now, we haven't seen any legislation brought forward before the House yet to address that, um, but it's something that needs to be addressed. It's so important that we restore confidence in the, you know, public confidence in how we spend our money. And this bill does that, and for that reason, we, we, we will be supporting it. Um, I now call on uh, Deputy Catherine Murphy. Right. Um, thank you very much. Um, uh, I'd just like to um, welcome this bill and say that um, I, I believe that it's, it makes sense and should be supported. I very much wish we had local government in this country, but I think we have a system of a local administration. And I think if anything demonstrates that very clearly, 
It's when the, um, the local government management services board um, opened up their fine new business.